However, if at any point you feel like you um, want to ask a question, I will do my best to tune in so that I can um, answer your questions. All right. Um, I've been at the school for about 16 years. And um, so I'm going to share a few things. And of course, now, now my machine is not advancing, right? Let me see if I can make this work. OK, here we go. So if you're considering dentistry, my request to you is that um, you ask yourself, why? Why am I interested in dentistry? And I came up with some things that I think are very important for you to consider as you ask yourself why you're interested in dentistry, or if you have to answer someone's question, why do you want to go into dentistry? But if you enjoy working with people, uh, you enjoy helping them and relieving their pain, restoring their smiles, if you enjoy using your hands, if you know that you're a person that has always enjoyed crafts, painting, sculpting, or working with Lego, Tinker Toys initially, right? Building blocks, uh, Legos. If you're a small detail person, so person that uses your hands, if you love art, any kind of art, um, if you really enjoy science courses and you want to do meaningful work, and in addition to doing meaningful work, if you want to have a uh, quality time that you spend with your family and friends. If you love your hobbies, for instance, some people that go, many people that go into dentistry are artists, they paint or they are musicians, they play instruments or they're, um, e or they either individually or they're in an orchestra, uh, in a band, that sort of thing. If you, uh, some people create things, they work in a wood shop or they cre create, uh, some people like jewelry making, um, some people paint. So these are indicators that you have the types of talents and skills that you need in order to be successful as a dentist. There are some professions, um, just before I go into that, just there are some professions that don't require you to have hand skills, but dentistry, even if after dental school, you don't use your hands a lot, during the four years of dental school, you will use your hands for a lot of small details. Teeth are small, intricate works of art. And even though all of us have similarities in our teeth from person to person or even in our mouth, every single tooth is uniquely different. So small details matter. Loma Linda has three, three main programs. Uh, we take 100 students in our dental class each year. We take 32 students in our international dentist program. These, this is a program specifically for people who finish dentistry in a different country and they want to become a dentist in this country. It's a two-year program. And then if you want a Bachelor of Science in Dental Hygiene, uh, we do, we have space for 42 individuals each year, and it is a two-year program. Many people want to know what it is that we look for in our students, and there are some very specific things that matter. Academic excellence, don't let that be a threatening thing. <laughs> We just mean that you need to show that you have the ability to be successful in science courses. And, um, you know, we look for a GPA of about 3.5 or so, but if your GPA is lower than that, please don't let that discourage you. A positive attitude, why is that important? We're gonna spend a minimum of two years with you. And it's usually four years for anyone going into dental school. And if you go through a bridge pathway, it's six years. But not only that, a positive attitude is incredibly important as you learn new habits, new skills, and so much information. Also, there are so many opportunities to um, have to do things over again or have to learn that, you know, okay, maybe the first attempt didn't work, but 
the second or third or fourth attempt might work. So having that can-do positive attitude is crucial to learning and to becoming excellent. Loma Linda values service. And so commitment to service is important to us. We look for that. So if you're a person who enjoys helping in your community, your school, your campus, your church, your family, um, these are things we look for. Dexterity, I already talked about how important hand skills are in the dental profession. And so we do look for that. You need to be looking for it too because you really don't wanna be in a program that isn't suited to your talents. And then spiritual journey, that's pretty important to your Loma Linda because we are a faith-based school. And when I say that, I mean, this school is run by the Seventh Adventist Church. It's a Christian school. And so here you would experience prayer in a classroom or a religious service, uh, chapel services, etc. So there are a variety of ways in which a spiritual journey will touch the students on our campus. We are not in the business of converting you from your religion to our religion. That is not what we mean by spiritual journey. We support people of every faith here at Loma Linda. So um, if you were to ask the question, why, why choose Loma Linda? I would tell you uh, at least these three things. Because we are faith-based uh, and respect all, all faiths. Because we have a commitment to service, and that's one of the things that we excel in. And, and we do service, a lot of service domestically, that means here in the country, and then a lot of service abroad so in other countries. We go across the border quite a bit as well. Um, so clinical excellence is one of the things that Loma Linda is known for. So not just being one of the very few faith-based dental schools in the U.S., but we do a lot of service and we have our students do a lot of patient care um, uh, before they graduate. We, some schools focus more on research, but Loma Linda, focuses, even though we do a lot of research, Loma Linda focuses a little bit more in patient care. So what does it mean to be in a faith-based environment? I did talk about chapel and that is a religious service that takes place every week and it's a one hour service. It's it held in the church that you see pictured on the left here right behind the students. <clears throat> and that church is right across the lawn from our school of dentistry. So a weekly chapel service, uh, prayer before class or before a test, you are required to take religion courses. Again, not to convert you, but to simply help you become more familiar with religions, not necessarily our religion, but other, re it could be a world religions course. It could be a course about how to function as, as a Christian dentist in this community or in your community. Um, lifestyle requirements go along with being a faith-based institution. What do I mean by lifestyle requirements? We actually ask you to avoid um, alcohol, uh, any, any, any kind of recreational drugs uh, and smoking. And so these are lifestyle requirements that you have to agree to before you become a student here. Our school is actually closed from sundown Saturday to sundown, uh, I'm sorry, sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. So sundown to sundown 24 hours, our school is locked and students and faculty, nobody's here. It's closed, it's dark, no one has access. Because even though we're not here to tell you when to worship, we just, our school won't be available. And uh, we don't tell you that you can't study on Saturday, but our school will not be open during that time. Let's see. Oh, one of the reasons why service learning is so important to us um, and why we involve our students in, in going out um, both 
in the clinic settings domestically and abroad is because we want our, our alums to be involved in service for the rest of their lives. So if the chances that you will be involved for the rest of your life are higher if, we, if you actually experience some of these mission trips or some of the community clinics where our students serve. So that's, that's the purpose. As you can see, there's a picture here of our mobile clinic. And Procter & Gamble actually donated this clinic to us. And there's two dental chairs. We use this for a variety of things, including health, health fairs. And uh, we actually take it to uh, elementary schools in San Bernardino. Uh, especially those schools that are known for having parents who aren't able to take time off work. Uh, we call them possibly um, blue collar workers. Uh, maybe there's a better term for that. But any, anyway, people that don't have the opportunity to take their children to the dentist. So we, we take these, this mobile van, we rotate the students through it, we do screening, we do a variety of other things like fluoride treatments and, and such. So we believe that we're meeting the needs of the community by doing this kind of outreach. We used to have all of these clinics. We don't have so many clinics right now because of COVID but we hope to get back to all these various clinics. There's a list of countries on the screen, and this is a small sampling of the various countries we go to on an annual basis. Of course, we don't go to this many every year, but each year we do, it, it used to be about 20 trips and then the economy did a downturn. So, more, more recently, just before COVID, we were doing about 10 different trip, international mission trips each year. Every student gets an opportunity to be funded or mostly funded for any travel they have to do outside the country. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I already told you that our students um, do a lot of patient care. So just, just to give you an idea, by the time you are at the end of your second year in dental school, you will be spending probably part of a day at the end of your D2 year. But by the time you're D3, you'll probably be spending two full days of your week taking care of patients. And by the time you're a fourth year student, you will be spending three to three and a half days of your week doing patient care. So as you go through dental school, it just goes up and goes up because we want you to have a lot of experience by the time you graduate so that you can feel ready to join the workforce. And maybe your speed won't be up the way that it needs to be, but at least you will have done, have done a lot of patient care so that you feel comfortable. If you haven't been to our website, I invite you to visit our website. There, there is a lot of information available there regarding prerequisites, admission requirements. We share our class profiles. I mean, we have many, many years worth of class profiles on our website to show you what our average GPAs and average VATs um, people come, come in with. <clears throat> we also list all the different schools that our students come from. And um, there's more information there as well. The average for all the, all the DAT scores and I think we even share the ethnicities. So there's a variety of pieces of information there and we list the scholarships. We also list DAT prep courses. We as our estimated budget for dental school and hygiene. We also have um, career, two summer workshops listed on our website. Careers in Dentistry is a very um, well attended and well received workshop every summer. We give you about five or six different lab experiences that simulate what the dental students do. 
And this gives you a chance to see, do I like this? Am I good at it? <clears throat> it um, puts you in touch with other dental students. You can ask them questions. Um, you get to shadow the clinic. You get to shadow students in a clinic setting. And you also get a chance to go to our gross anatomy lab, our simulation center. So you get an opportunity to really spend, spend four days having a very in-depth look at what it's like, you know, walk our halls, sit in our classrooms, listen to the faculty, talk about their area of specialty. So it's really a great opportunity. If you are shopping for a career or shopping for a school, this is a good way to have more insight, you know, look around, listen to the conversations and the experience the the um just the school climate uh walk on our campus eat eat meals here so that you can see what a vegetarian diet um tastes like because on our campus you will not find at least unless you're a patient in the hospital you won't you won't find real chicken or beef you might you might find meat alternatives so it's it's interesting to at least visit to um, hear the various experiences from students, from alumni, and faculty. <clears throat> so if, if, you, if you are looking for something like that, then I encourage you um, to come for our summer workshop. All right, next, we do have a variety of specialty programs and um, as you can see, look at the number in the class. Three, two, three, six is the most for our orthodontics program. And then we have a couple of others, pediatrics and prosthodontics that take four students each year. <clears throat> but as you can see, these are really tiny, tiny classes. So uh, only about 20% of people that finish dental school specialize. And you can see that the programs are very small and they last anywhere from two years, but most of them are three years. The oral surgery one is six years after dental school. So anyway, that's quite a long time, but how I see it is, you, if this is the goal you want, then the amount of time that you're spending shouldn't really matter. And how I also see it is you're going to live those years anyway. You might as well be working on the goal that matters to you, right? All right. Um, I have a variety of other things to share. For instance, if you're not accepted to dental school, what are some things you can do? <clears throat> and there's a variety, but here's, here's a really important message from me. Most schools of dentistry will not speak to students. And their reason for doing for not speaking to students, if you're a prospective student, is because they don't have time. <clears throat> Here at Loma Linda, we do. We do talk to you. We, we can meet with you in advance. We can do a Zoom meeting. You can do an in-person meeting. You can come to one of our workshops. But here's some things we point people to is, you know, um, strengthening study skills, strengthening your test taking strategies, um, making sure that you are not just assuming that the dental admission test is easy and that you're actually using the guides that are available. And we can point you to those. We have those on our website. If you need to learn strengthen your English, <clears throat> then we will point you to work with a professional. We have a um, accent modification uh, program on our campus. So even for sometimes current students, we try not to accept students who aren't ready, but once in a while it happens, we'll, we'll accept a student and their language skills aren't what they need to be. And patients may have a hard time understanding the student. So what we'll do is send them to the uh, <clears throat> speech language uh, sciences and disorders department and um, get to get help with their accent. 
If you have emotional issues, we have a lot of support on our campus. <clears throat> if you have unhealthy coping mechanisms, if you have a substance abuse problem, these are all things that are important to focus on before dental school. And then many people want to know, um, how can I move forward if I have a low DAT score, <clears throat> a low DAT score or a low GPA? So I just want you to know that we do have this pathway, but it does involve two more years of going through our hygiene program, showing that you can get excellent grades. <clears throat> And um, we will take you with a, G a DAT as low as 17 and your biology, the BCP, if you don't know what that is, biology, chemistry, physics. If those grades are low and your GPA <clears throat> is a whole point below what we like to see, there's still hope. And we've had many success stories of people that have this profile and they did our program, our hygiene program, and now they're either in dental school or they're graduated. So we're very happy that we have this program available for people who get a rough start. And there are many reasons to get a rough start. What is meant by academic excellence? This slide just shows you what what things you can do but a lot of the times if you really want to improve your gpa we just ask you i mean you don't have to take all these recommended courses but you but you do need to improve your biology your chemistry and your um physics grades that's that's one way to to improve does anybody have any questions about this All right, moving right along. Uh, let me see. Here's a question. Can someone with a foreign DDS join the dental hygiene program to continue to the DDS program? Um, well, I guess how I would respond to this is you could do that, but um, you don't need to do that. If you're a dentist, all you have to do is, well, all you have to do is pass boards, <clears throat> pass the in integrated national board, which is a one written test. And then you also need to take a TOEFL, a test of English as a foreign language. And with that, you are qualified to then apply to our international dentist program. I know that in uh, Florida, if you're a dentist, I think all you have to do is pass a test and then you can work as a registered uh, dental hygienist. But in California, that's not the case. <clears throat> and the thing about doing our hygiene program that I need, I think it's important for you to know, there's a lot of, there's a long list of prerequisites to do the hygiene program. And it only works well for people that, for instance, already have a college degree or they've been in college three or four years and they've already had a bunch of the um, general education requirements. Most people that have majored in something and have prepared for dentistry, if their GPA is low, they probably only have to take two or three courses before qualifying for or meeting the prerequisites for hygiene. And that's why that bridge pathway does work for that group. <clears throat> I don't know if I answered your question adequately, but here's another one. Is math necessary for dental school? We don't have a math requirement. And um, even though we don't have a math requirement, it's probably wise to do at least college algebra just so that you can do well in some of the other courses that are required like physics. Um, chemistry, I think kind of, you don't have to have math before that, but we don't have a specific math requirement before or during dental school, so. So many students ask me if they should become 
a dental hygienist first to get experience and then go to dental school? Do you think this is a wise path to take? <clears throat> well, I'm going to answer that in two ways. Is wise if you really are unsure, if you have a lot of doubts and you're really not sure if you will like it, then I would say, instead of even becoming a hygienist, I, I would say, why don't you work in a dental office as a dental assistant and spend more time in the environment? You, you will know if you like it or not. I don't think it's necessary to become a hygienist to then go on to dentistry, but that is one way to do it. It's just that it's going to take you an, an additional two years and maybe longer. And if you, let's say that you were to major in even psychology, but during that major, you would have the chance to take all of the prerequisites for dentistry. You can't do that if you major in hygiene because hygiene has very specific prerequisites and it's a specific program during which you don't have time to take dental prerequisites. So instead of taking, let's say seven or eight years to get through college and dental school, it can take you an additional two years or three years. So you might be taking, you might be in, it might take you nine years or 10 years to get through all of that. So it's just not necessary. Would being an RDA or a registered dental assistant be useful before dental school? I think yes. I think it would be very useful because then you can work closely with a dentist and with the entire team and you can know, do I like this environment or uh, I really don't like it. I don't like how I feel here. You know, that's really good for you. And that's why we say shadowing is a must. <clears throat> in fact, we require 50 hours of shadowing in a dental office because we don't want you to be surprised in a negative way. In other words, we don't want you to spend one year of time and $100,000 to find out that you don't like it. So that's why working as an RDA or anything really that you can do, even not working, just shadowing, can tell you if you like the dental world or not. Does that make sense? I see another question. Would internships and or mentoring be recommended before enrolling? I think absolutely yes. Internships <clears throat> and the shadowing or slash mentoring, I think um, that those are the most helpful experiences because you will have an opportunity then to find out for yourself by being in the environment, you will, you will know if you like uh, the dental world. Uh, that's the beauty of shadowing. Another question. This is great. Thank you for all the questions. Uh, does doing the DDS program mean you learn how to do everything in dentistry, like all the specialized things? <clears throat> well, you know, when you go through dentistry, you will learn all the basic things. You may not learn how to be an expert uh, in root canals, or you may not be able to put in braces, but you do learn all the basics of general dentistry, including how to pull teeth. And usually oral surgeons pull teeth, but a general dentist pretty much learns how to do all of it. And if you want to specialize and just do root canals or just pull wisdom teeth or just do braces, you can, you can do that. But general dentists, can learn how to how to do ortho or without having to go through a specialty. So as a general dentist, you will learn a lot. And maybe you won't be an expert by the time you graduate dental school, but you'll certainly be ready to practice as a dentist. And you will learn so much more after you leave. Admission tips. And of course, if you have other questions, let me know. Um, the admission tips, applying early is very smart. <clears throat> so our applications open up June 1st. 
and they go and we keep it open till November 1st. So you have quite a bit of time, but don't wait. Don't wait till November 1 and then feverishly be typing. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, oh it's too late to submit the application because it's Eastern time. So they're three hours ahead of us, right? So apply in June or July is what I normally recommend. Don't spend forever on your personal statement and try not to use chat GBT or some other AI because we want to get to know you. So sure, get help and tips on how to make your essays or your personal statement yours and polished, but um, we appreciate having your your statement, not a computer's statement. <clears throat> if you don't hear from us for, a, for quite a while, please give us a call. We will talk to you over the phone. We'll answer your questions. And then anything, you know, that it is on your end to do, like making sure your transcripts are submitted, reference letters, essays and all of that and make sure you you complete that in a timely manner all right um if you are not accepted to dental school please give us a call make an appointment to talk to us <clears throat> we'll talk to you about the various things that you can do if you take a dat and you're not sure if that's a, a dat or a dental admission test that that's going to be acceptable or before you spend the money to apply, talk to us, ask us, is this a reasonable DAT to apply with? All right, I know you've been asking questions already um, during the presentation, but is there anything else that I can help answer? All right, well, uh, let me see. What majors are recommended for dental school? I think that's an excellent question, Charlotte. <clears throat> um, in general, what we'd like to encourage you to do is to select a major that you are interested in. If you major in something that you don't like, what happens is that you'll be miserable in college and your grades may suffer if you're not happy um, learning the things that you're learning. So I, I do need to be transparent with you and say, if you major in science, a science like biology or biomedical science, it's gonna help you in the first two years of dental school a lot. It may not help you for the rest of your life, but it's gonna help you in dental school. A lot of people like to choose chemistry because we already require so much, so much chemistry before to just to meet our prerequisites, you're already taking quite a bit of chemistry. So that that would be an easy major. But then you're only learning chemistry, just like one piece of the pie, right? You're not getting a broader uh, education. So if you love chemistry, by all means, choose that. But if you prefer to study uh people you know if you want to major in psychology or a language or music or business that's actually pretty popular major business but it's a very busy major so we recommend that you select a major that really inspires you excites you and interests <clears throat> you'll have a better time in college any other questions All right. Well, we don't have to use up all the minutes that we have. We can let you go. Tuan, do you have anything that you wanted to say? <clears throat> you muted, Tuan. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> I was on mute. Looks like there's still one final question that was added to the chat. If you don't mind just addressing that, then Thank after you. that, I can just do some uh, final closing comments. Thank you so much, Esther. You're most welcome. So, what are the three things? Uh, YLLU, I got spiritual, faith-based, community service, and what is the third? Okay, 
Uh, so why LLU? Um, if you got the, we are faith-based dental school, great, and community service. Um, but the other one was we, we um, focus on clinical excellence. We give you a lot of clinical experience because we do research, but we prioritize clinical practice over research. And some dental schools prioritize research and then clinical practice. So those are the, the three uh, Loma Linda, the why Loma Linda. Thank you for your question, Nancy. And then it looks like there's a raised hand, Sylvia. You have a question, Sylvia? Yes, I do. Um, sorry, it's just faster for me to say it than type it. <laughs> if a student pursues a non-science major, do you have a preference as to where the student takes the prerequisites for a dental, uh, dental school? It, can they take it at the community college or do you prefer it at the university level? That's really a great question. And even though I think it's totally okay to take some classes at a community college, <clears throat> and let me explain by what I mean regarding science, some science classes. So I think physics is a perfect one to take at a community college because there's no physics in dental school. There's no physics on the DAT. G Chem, general chemistry is another class I think it's perfect to take at a community college. But once you get into biology, organic, and biochemistry, I highly recommend a, a four-year institution just because you are preparing for a doctoral program. And because of that, often the four-year universities might step it up a little bit more for you and might might you know even though many community colleges do a wonderful job and they really do they put you through the paces sometimes at a four-year institution you might get a little extra and well we think it's a good idea to to spend time in both probably save money go to your community college and then also spend some time at a four-year university before you come to the doctoral program so that's how i would prioritize that and um, is DAT only on science subjects like biology and chemistry, or are all subjects on there like English, math, and sciences? That's a really good question. So uh, let me just share with you what's on the DAT. Biology, for sure. Chemistry, general chemistry, and then organic chemistry. And English, you do have a reading comprehension section on the dental admission test. And many people don't think that's important, but actually it's very important how you do in uh, reading comprehension because it's also testing your critical thinking skills and your ability to read quickly and apply the knowledge you just read onto the um, test. So math, yes. Quantitative reasoning, math is on the, it, it's also on the dental admission test. And there are no other sciences on the dental admission test, just the three that we mentioned, biology, chemistry, and organic. So that's about it, right? I mean, we have more time. I'm sure if you, if there are more questions, I'm happy to answer them.